Hi, welcome to episode 67 of Talk About the Passion, Feeding the Fire. Today I speak with drummer Wes Keeley. One of the best things about doing this podcast is meeting new and interesting people and hearing their stories, especially folks I don't know well. Wes contacted me after I released my episode with Damien Moyal about coming on, and I was glad to have him as a guest. I've been trying to shorten these intros up and not tell you, you know, every single thing we talk about before you listen to it. But just uh, let me tell you, I named this episode after the song by No Use for a Name, uh, Feeding the Fire. Uh, Wes talked about them being an influence in the band Spit he played on, uh, played with early on. Again, I try not to put too much thought into the titles of these episodes. It's just the last thing I do once I finish, you know, listening through to them a few times before editing them. Anyway, Wes uh, was a great guest. Uh, we talked about him getting into music, uh, some of the bands he's played in. I was familiar with Walls of Jericho, uh, but hadn't heard his previous band, Earth Mover, uh, and I checked out their record, uh, Death Carved in Every Word, uh, from 1998, and the drum ring is uh, it's fucking great. Pardon my language. Uh, so look up that record. The, the whole thing's actually great, not just the drumming. Uh, so it's cool to find uh, hardcore, like good quality hardcore that slipped uh, under my radar. Uh, we also got into a bit about his company K Breaks, uh, which is a drum kit slide prevention product uh, that he created. That story is uh, pretty amazing and shows how passionate and driven uh, a guy Wes is. Again, I was glad to have him on and uh, definitely check out his drumming. Uh, if you go to like Discogs, uh, dot com, you can you see a list of all the stuff he's played on and uh, search that stuff down. It's great. And if you're a drummer, uh, check out K-Breaks. A couple more things. Uh, you can listen to this podcast pretty much everywhere you listen to podcasts. I'm even on Spotify now. Uh, please subscribe and review if you like what you hear. It's all greatly appreciated. I'm on social media, Facebook and Instagram, and both of those are kept up to date. If you want to say hello or talk about uh, being a guest on the podcast please send me a message there. Anyway, here we go. Episode 67, Feeding the Fire. Wes Keeley, thanks for listening. All right, I'm here with uh, Wes Keeley. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good, man. How are you? Very good, very good. And uh, you're in uh, Michigan right now. And uh, did you grow up in, in that area? Um, I mean, I grew up in Michigan. I, li I lived on the other side of the state, which is like two, basically two hours from where I live now. So, um, grew up on the like Detroit side, Flint side of the state, and now I'm on the, I'm on the Lake Michigan side of the state. Oh, okay. Um, and, and, and what kind of, uh, area was that where you, where you grew up in? Um, I mean, I mean, you know, you've heard stories of Flint, Michigan, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 It's, uh. You know, it's it's pretty much what you hear. It's yeah. uh, you know, fairly fairly accurate. Um, you know, but I mean, when I was you know when I was a kid, I mean, this is like, you know, everyone was moving to to Flint to work at General Motors, right? Right, and so like I think like seventy eight or seventy nine was like the pinnacle of like the most amount of moves into that city from like all over the U.S. Oh, okay, and so. You know, when I was a kid, like it was fine. Like it was, right. I grew up there and it was, it was normal to me. But, um, you know, as I got older, it got, you know, it, it's progressively gotten, you know, worse in certain spots. And a lot of spots have actually gotten really a lot better, which is cool. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it's interesting when I later, when I ended up moving to Detroit, people were like, you're from Flint? Whoa. I'm like, <laughs> what? It's, it's totally opposite, you know? So, right, right. And, uh, and so how, how did you get into music in, in, when you were a kid there? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a weird thing. Like, I think that, you know, my first, probably my first run at like, you know, you're like a kid, right? Your dad has like all, all the music, all like the, you know, my dad wasn't like big into real music. He was like, I say real music, but he was like, he was like, you know, Patsy Cline and yeah. like the doors and like men at work and the Beatles. And like, he was more of like a, whatever's on the radio he didn't really have like a lot of music right around the house but you know when i was i have a um had an older brother growing up who was a few years older than me when i was like you know 10 he was 13 and he was super pumped on like 
you know, Sepultura and like Deicide and Ozzy and like, you know, all those like metal bands. He was like one of those metal kids that like had the leather jacket with the mullet and like the pins and the Adidas with the big tongues. <laughs> yep. I mean, he was that dude, you know? Yeah. yeah. Those, those sneakers rule. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's, I still see them around sometimes. Yeah. Man. I, yeah. I th- I th- people still rocking them. Yeah, there's a yeah, there's an Instagram uh, page that has uh, pictures of it's like '80s thrash and it's all sort of dudes like that with you know, there's like a ho- an entire band and they're all wearing the <laughs> the giant white sneakers with the tongues hanging out. And that's uh, a hot yeah. hot style, man. Yeah, yeah, with like the Vision streetwear shirts and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, so, so did you start uh, borrowing records from from his uh, record collection? You know, when it, it's it would end up happening is like you know he would he would play stuff and he would be like oh listen to this and he'd he'd be real hot on like something. And my brother was one of those dudes that like um, always talked about playing drums and had like you know black lacquer drumsticks. Who told he told me when I was a kid like these are like hundred dollar drumsticks, right? And, like I didn't know any better, right? <laughs> yeah. And and you know he they had never touched a drum. They were like perfectly smooth and and he would like air drum you know, all these like Maiden songs and all of these like <laughs> Sepultura songs. Right. Yeah. Um, and so like I started, you know, eventually I would, you know, he would just be, we'd be hanging out together like in the living room or whatever. And, and he would be playing some, some songs and some, um, you know, some record or some cassette. And I'd be like, Oh, and he'd be like, Oh, this is, and he'd like, turn it up. He'd be like, this is this part. He'd start like moshing me and pushing me in the ground and <laughs> like creating his own like weird stoner mosh pit, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. It was, I mean, it's classic. It's yeah. classic. Yeah, I had my my brother. <laughs> that's funny. We 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 used to have actual full band like uh, lips. Like he had a like a one of his friends would have like play guitar. They would have like yeah like just a dude with drumsticks. So that never <laughs> touched a drum set. Uh, but but <laughs> later on when I when I was a teenager, I you know I I was pretty good at air drumming. Like Disposable Heroes was was my big one. But, you know. Oh yeah, dude. That's a. <laughs> That's that's a good one, man. That one's got lots of beats in it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so so we, were you att- were you attracted to to drummer in, in music? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I really wasn't. I it was it was weird. I I never. I even even today, like I've I've been playing music for almost thirty years all over the world, right? And I still am like, it's so weird. I play drums sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, it's so weird. Yeah. But I, you know, I growing up like I was never really interested in drumming or like cared about it i had you know i didn't have any rhythm like i i you know i was just some weird white kid from flint right Right. and it's just like my uh my best friend who like you know we were like skate buddies like we would go out and skate curbs and just crazy like all night thrash sessions and yeah he ended up getting a guitar at one point and and he was like oh I, i got this guitar from my neighbor and i was like oh cool and he started he learned to play like molly's lips oh nice right yeah. And this was and this was like what probably ninety ish. Yeah, yeah. Right. 91. And he's yeah. yeah. And he's like and he's like playing this thing. I'm like, oh they're cool, man. Like I'll I'll get some drums and we'll start a band. Yeah. Right. And I and I, I had no idea. Like I, I bought some shitty drum set off the, some kid right. for like eighty dollars, which was the worst drum set in the world. <laughs> but you know, it, it worked for a minute, you know? Yeah. And uh, it it just kind of happened. Like I was never like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna grow. Like I never grew up playing snare drum or right. marching band and yeah. that stuff. I was just like, I'm gonna do this with you. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. And when you know, when you when you first started playing, did it like click with you, or were you just still oh, no. sort of you were just kind of like, yeah, whatever. We're, we're playing no, some songs was... with my friend. Well, you know what? It's it's funny. Like that that kit literally had two tom. It had a 12 inch. It was a five piece kit, kind yeah. of. Right, it had a it had a uh, two toms, rack toms, a floor tom, a ride cymbal that was painted yellow, <laughs> um, and a hi hat stand, a snare drum with two broken heads, yeah. and no kick pedal. <laughs> so like the first day I got the drums there, like of course he brought over the guitar. He's like, let's jam, right? We didn't know how to play, right? And I'm just like hitting this ride symbol just kind of going like boom 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 like on these toms like <laughs> yeah. and we and we we thought we were just you know the cat's pajamas yeah, we were yeah. crushing it you know what i mean yeah um but it's you know it's one of those and you save up and try to get like you know from the pawn shop i think i bought some hi-hats and yeah no no clutch you know what i mean like it's just weird 
does does any of that first drum set still exist? In... Uh, um, I'm sure it does somewhere. Like they were they were actually at the time. I mean, looking back at it, like they were actually like old Ludwig. Oh, okay. Drums and they were good drums, but like. You know, I didn't have bottom hardware on them or heads. I had napkins and duct tape, like holding the. <laughs> yeah. So they didn't like ring because I didn't understand how yeah. it worked. And, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I just, they were just crap. And I was just like, oh, but now if I had them, I'd probably be like, oh, these are great. And they'd be tongue tuned up and sweet looking. Yeah, but, yeah, you'd fix them up. And... You know, I don't think, I think, I don't think I have one piece of gear from that time. From that time, yeah. No, I mean, this was, you know, this was. 90 91 i guess yeah, yeah. that's crazy. so yeah yeah dude it's, it's it's weird how we fall into that stuff you know what i mean i know right and and like actually learning to play other band songs is when you're a teenager is is that must that's a pretty cool feeling right you know like you're like wow we can actually play this song that you know nirvana does or or, or whoever did you uh start getting into more like difficult stuff at any point with like with drumming um i mean eventually you know you, yeah. you progress right eventually right, you right. learn stuff but but it, the, the really like the way that i really learned stuff like like i said like it didn't click for me at all like yeah. i spent i spent probably three years three specific summers like in my garage in like 90 100 degree garage playing drums as fast and as much as i could yeah and i would we would go down downtown flint at the time had like a pretty good scene like a lot of like cool punk bands would come out and um it, you know it was, a, it was a weird you know the early 90s was like a weird scene in general yeah but Definitely. you know there's a lot of cool bands and flint had you know its share of like local heroes right and i would literally stand next to any drummer i could see and just watch right and just watch yeah. Yeah. watch what they're doing and most of it didn't make any sense to me because i didn't really understand like limb separation or you know, any of that stuff of how drumming actually worked. Yeah. But, you know, I would see like some role and be like, oh, how do you do that? Or like see someone do a quad with like, you know, two kicks and like a, a rack and a floor, right. a rack and a snare. And I'm like, how do they do that and make that sound? Right. Yeah. And so you just pick up stuff over yeah. and over and over. Yeah. I spent like three years just staring at people. Yeah. People probably thought I was weird, you know? <laughs> and, and for like in that era, there wasn't YouTube or, or people people with cell phones so you, you kind of had to remember it because you, you know you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to go on youtube and like keep rewinding like oh that's so that's how he plays that you know so it was yeah it was, you just was, you just had to do your best man just to try to pick up i mean you would pick up you know you'd, you'd, you'd see a like a drummer play a good drummer play you know 10 or 12 songs you might remember like two of the things right yeah and then you got to figure out you know how the how to put them in like an application yeah yeah you know i mean like I might be able to do it with this roll or quad or whatever, but like, I don't know where to use that. And of right. course I used it all wrong. Right. <laughs> yeah. The first 16 times I'm like, this is real weird. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, yeah. That seems to be the, the thing that you early on when you're, you're, you know, if like I was in a band and the, and the, the guitar, the lead guitar player learned finger tapping. So that was in like every fucking, you know, every <laughs> song you had to have a little finger tapping part. And, same with yep. the, the drummer, you know, if he learned some sort of uh, role or whatever, yeah, it would it would show up all over the place. And I'm gonna I'm gonna bet at some point your band played "Am I Evil" and that he went nuts. <laughs> oh, of course, he went nuts. Yep. Yeah, and, re and rehearsal that was that was a big one. "Am I Evil" definitely. Yep. Uh, Everyone that blah, 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 that little finger tapping <laughs> part. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we'd go from that, but then we would go to like. Uh, Smashing pumpkins, you know, rhinoceros and stuff like that. So. <laughs> nice, <laughs> but, nice. Uh, so, <clears throat> you were talking about skateboarding. Did did you connect that with music at all as a young kid? Oh, definitely, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, our our big thing was like, we this is crazy. We used to do this thing in Flint where we would we would get up at like thirty in the morning mm -hmm. and go skateboarding. Yeah. Like, we we in Mesa like a lot of the places that were open during the day that would kick us out. Yeah, we could we could go there and skate, you know, at four or five in the morning when yeah. no one's there. The, the bars are all closed, whatever. Right. And it was like just just late enough where like all the creepsters and like you know people that would like mess with you would be you know gone or you yeah. know home Re or whatever. Retired. And before people got up to go to work. Yeah. yeah. So like we had this sweet spot, man. We would 
you know, we would watch skate videos all night long. We watched like 120 minutes. We'd yeah. watch, you know, alternative nation or whatever. And you'd see like, you know, things like infectious grooves oh, yeah. and like, yeah. you know, urban dance squad. Right. Yeah. We love that urban dance squad video with oh, all yeah. skaters in it. Right. Is that deeper shade of soul? I think. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. That's, that's a hot one. <laughs> I had that single at one point. I think. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, actually I, I think I bought the tape at one point. It yeah. wasn't, I don't remember being like, yeah, this I'm going to keep rocking this. It was, it had some hits, but it was brief. It was, yeah, yeah. yeah that was pretty much it. Right. So, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, we, we would watch, you know, later we end up watching, you know, skate videos where we would hear songs. Like I remember the first time I heard like Lush Move, right. Yeah. From the Fushnikins was like yeah. plan B, plan B video, um, Sean Sheffy, right. He's doing like late shove it's over stuff. And you're like, you know, and they're just like, Lush Move, you ain't got nothing to prove. <laughs> it's a sweet, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's funny, like uh, people from uh, almost everyone I talk to has a, a skating background, even if they sort of skated casually or you know could you know skate well. It seems like that's a uh, a big connection from this this world that we come from anyway, with you know hardcore and metal and punk and that kind of thing. So I mean, it's it's so inter intertwined, right? I mean, yeah, it's all the all the flipped up hats with like. You know, Zorlac yeah, and like, yeah. you know, Metallica and yeah. you know, uh, Suicidal. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, and those, like and those those skate videos introduced a lot of people to uh, to to music they they wouldn't have heard. You know? Oh, absolutely. And then you got to figure out, you know, who was that and where did you get it? And eventually, they started getting smart and putting like little credits at the bottom, right? Like a like yeah. a music video. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. So dudes could like find the songs. You know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Did you, uh, so uh, who were some of the bands you were listening to? Is it like when you were skating in that? In that um, way? you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of this stuff kind of melds together. Like, I feel like when we kind of started, started skating, like I remember specifically having like the Ride the Lightning cassette. Yeah. Right. And that being like, it was like a taped over cassette 16 times. Right. It had like the little, <laughs> little paper and the top pieces so you could like tape, yeah, over, yeah, tape over whatever yeah. was yeah whatever was on there and yeah. we had like we had ride the lightning and you know we would we had that we were big on like the you know misfits and like out of step yeah. um i mean we had an out of step cassette i mean that was you know just crushing it right yeah, yeah. and so that was like a hot one for us and then like um you know we it, it's it's weird like we would we had a bunch of friends that were like way into like some different stuff. So one of our guys was like that we hung out with who was like way into Slayer. He's like, yeah, this is, he's like this, this double disc rain and blood. This is it. Right. He's like, this yeah. is, you know, this is the pinnacle for him. Right. Yeah. And so, but me, like, you know, I went to Flint schools and, and which is a little different and, and a little different than, you know, where some of these other guys went to school and it's like, you know, there was a, a big difference of, of like influence. Like my, I was real excited about things like judgment night, like when that came out, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Like mixing it together. And yeah, obviously like, yeah. you know, those bands like rage and, yeah. but I mean, as far as like the, like on the punk side of it, dude, it was, it was much more like understanding, you know, like out of step, you know, early BC boys yeah, and misfits. I mean, that was, that was yeah. pretty much what was rocking around was us. Soundtrack, yeah. 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 And and did you get into straight edge at, at that time? I did. Yeah. And and probably like so I'm I'm still straight edge now, which yeah. is absolutely insane, right? It's, oh, yeah. it's, it's been <laughs> so long. Um yeah, this is about the time where I really started like understanding, you know, like and then, I mean it's there's a bunch of you know, everyone has their reasons, right? Why right. they decide yeah. to, to, to be part of that. Of course. Or whatever. But you know, I started like kind of identifying it. I didn't really know what straight edge was. I knew that in the beginning, like I was kind of abstaining from things more because like my brother was like a big, like stoner, like drinker dude. Right. You know, he's that dude. Like he was a daredevil, man. Yeah. He, he would just like, just cause wreaking havoc like all the time, right. all the time. And so I was just like, you know, it's pretty much a roadmap of like what not to do with your life. Right. Yeah, of course. And so watching him, I'm like, well, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I'm not going to do, you know what I mean? It was pretty yeah, easy. Yeah. So yeah. Um, but yeah, then we, I started like understanding, I'm like, Oh, what are these, you know, these strange bands. And then we kind of like, you know, that kind of like punk stuff starts evolving for us, yeah. you know, into like the, 
you know, the victory record style stuff. Right. That started moving, you know, toward the, the mid nineties. Right. Yeah. And, and lyrics started to get more important for you at that point, I imagine, obviously. Oh yeah. Paying attention more than, uh, although like ride the lightning and those, those, the, those metal bands saying about interesting stuff, but I think, uh, we are able to connect more with something like minor threat, you know? Well, it's just, it, it, it makes, I mean, it's, it sounds crazy, but it makes more sense. I mean, anytime, you know, you can, I, you can much more identify with people that are somewhat closer to your own age right? and somewhat reachable. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even though minor threat obviously wasn't reachable at the time. Right. right? But that, the idea that like Metallica definitely wasn't reachable. Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting how you start kind of identifying with those bands and, and just being, you know, being about them and being what they're about, understanding yeah. their message and what they're really trying to do. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. We, I talk about that on a lot of these episodes where, you know, if you came from a background of being into bands like Zeppelin and Kiss and, you know, Ozzy and, and that kind of thing, meeting any of them seemed like a completely foreign thing. But if you went to a hardcore show, you know, after the band played, they'd be standing next to you and they would be wearing the same clothes you would be wearing. And right, you would look up to them just as much as, you know, you would look up to, you know, I remember the first time I saw... Uh, uh, I guess this is me <laughs> bragging a little, but I saw I never saw the Misfits, but I saw Sam Hain when, when they played in Cambridge, Mass. And I just remember when I saw Glenn Danzig, it was you know like if Robert Plant walked by someone, right? Else, you know, something like that, right? So, and uh, but that was always a, a a big thing for me with with punk rock was being able to relate to uh, people were very relatable. It's it's important though, right? I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. I mean, how many? It's I I think that you know some you know if you, even like today you know something like Instagram mm -hmm. people that are really famous are I don't know what I I feel maybe I'm wrong but I feel they're so much more reachable. Yeah, yeah. Even definitely. even though they may have people like running their accounts, right? Right. You, they still have the ability. You you have the ability to send them a message where like yeah, yeah. twenty years ago you had to write a letter to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while so, you'll hear someone like, Oh my God, Tom Hanks liked my tweet or, you know, or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah. It, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Uh, uh, you know, for, and that definitely happens with, with music a lot. Cause I, I and especially right now where a lot of musicians are home <laughs> doing nothing. So uh, they're, they're, it's, it's a good time to be a, a fan of music right now, I think. Yeah, I think I think that 2020, 20, yeah, 2021, yeah. 2022, like everyone's going to be putting out records, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just going to be just a mass yeah. get it out there. and <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, which is great, which is, is what we need, right? Yeah. Um, so so as far as so going back to uh, drumming, um, well, I, I, or let's go back like to so what, do you remember what the, the first sort of the hardcore show you saw that wasn't the. Uh, um the first the first hardcore show that i probably went to uh, actually funny enough it was probably it was probably um an earth mover show okay in detroit yeah and, and i mean interesting enough i ended up playing in that band later but yeah before i was in the band i was in a band called spit and okay. we were from flint and we started we basically started playing like we we got real excited about like, you know, bands like no effects and propaganda and, yeah. you know, no use for a name, all those bands. Yeah, yeah. And then, but we were still like real, like rooted in this, like, you know, we like, you know, punk and we like hardcore and we like, so, you know, we, it's, it's interesting. Like we recorded a record in probably 96 maybe. Yeah. And half the record is stuff that we record in our early demos, which sounds like that, like kind of more heavy version of like no use for a name right. kind of style. Yeah. And then, and then somehow during there, during that, like, I don't know, era, we discovered like firestorm oh, and yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. and so like it, it somehow became this thing where like the, the second half of the record, 
is all just like turn, 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 yeah. turn, 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 you know, <laughs> yeah. it's super like heavy and chuggy. And, yeah. you know, we had to like mix the songs up because we're like, oh, we can't have this whole half of the record be like no effects sounding fast beats. And then the rest of it be like, you know, super like mushed, mushed up rock beats. You know what I mean? Right. And is that, that's the uh, death carved in every word, that one? No, this oh. would have been, this would have been, this would have been the spit record. Oh, spit. That we, oh, okay. That, all right. Yep. Yep. Oh, right, that we right. did in 96 okay and then we actually recorded it's it's crazy like how old this is we actually recorded the first half with so there's a guy named mark hudson that uh, runs a a studio called rancho recordo yeah and he's done like against me take it back sunday suicide machines hellmouth like all these bands nice and we used to record with him like in his basement right when when we were we were kids you know and yeah and he's he's went on to do you know all these great bands and tour all these great bands i mean in uh we recorded the first half of the record with him and then we recorded the second half of the record with mike from earth mover oh okay and so we just had like a bunch of songs we're like oh let's go in and finish these up right and then actually derek grant who was a drummer for alkaline trio right yeah he had a record label called um old school records yeah and he put out that record on his label. Oh, all right. In like '97. Yeah. So, yeah, it's 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 weird how it's all intertwined. But you know, us <laughs> growing yeah. growing up later, being older, I'm like, oh yeah, remember that record we did? And yeah. Back in you know whatever. That's crazy. So, so weird, is, man. So is this how you hooked up with Earth Mover? Through that. Yeah. Uh-huh. So. Yeah. Yeah, we used to play shows. I remember. So yeah, I I kind of answered your question, I guess, about my first hardcore show, but the earth mover show like we, we spit used to play these shows in flint yeah. and then and and then at some point you know we made our way down to detroit and we played this place in detroit called the 404 willis yeah and it was it was it, for us i was like this is sketchy man like i'm, <laughs> I'm I, I rolled in yeah. normally like we're we're used to this sounds kind of silly but like we're used to like at the time we were used to like the disney version so like we had someone that like ran the whole place right. we knew them yeah, yeah. like they knew your parents you know what right. i mean like it was one of those yeah, kind yeah. of things we get down to detroit and like you know there's just random kids running the place people are drinking 40s inside right like you know there's glass people are peeing in the corner like it was crazy we're yeah. like yeah you know it's like they just had this place you know that, that they had shows and i was just like this is this is wild man and like you know all like the suicide machines dude were there and all the earth mover dudes and like you know, dudes from like random punk and ska bands. Or I'm like, this is just a weird mix down here, man. Yeah. <laughs> but then we ended up, you know, we played a bunch of shows with them. They played a bunch of shows up or a handful of shows up in Flint uh, with us. And then we, at some point, their drummer, you know, had to, had to, had to bail and he was going to move to Florida or something. So they, they all kind of like came to a, a consensus that they wanted to ask me. And I remember one of the shows, in Detroit that we played to them at this place called Pharaohs. Yeah. We, uh, they came up and, you know, kind of grabbed me and we're like, Hey, you know, we're going to do these tours and we're going to tour with like catharsis and we're going to go to Europe and blah, blah. And I'm like, Oh, I'm like, and I had never really toured any before. I was like 17. Right. And so yeah. they, I rolled back to my table and my dudes were like, what do they want? I'm like, they just asked me to join earth mover and earth mover to us was like a big deal. Right. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, dude, that's so crazy. You know, I'm like, <laughs> you know, those dudes ended up, from the rest of the dudes from Spit ended up starting another band called Kid Brother Collective. Okay. Which is like this kind of fiddler record style emo kind of indie rock band. Right. Nice. Um, and they're super good, super great band. And um, and I went on and did or, did Earth Mover stuff. Wow. It was very strange transition, yeah. but but natural. I think it made right, sense. Right. Right. And and so at this point, how how long were you playing drums? You think both by now? Um, four. Four years, yeah. And, uh, Maybe. Th- th- who are who are some of your early influences, or like favorite drummers? You know, I mean, I I got I got real excited, you know, just because of the amount of stuff that he would did. Like, when anytime I'd watch, um, you know, Tim Alexander from Primus, yeah, yeah, like that that was cool to me. Um, you know, watching dudes like, I, you know, obviously like, I thought I, I thought I was Lars Ulrich at one point, <laughs> yeah. Right. I had bought two extra toms for my kit, painted them all white <laughs> with spray paint. And I thought I was like in the freaking Enter Sandman video. You know what I mean? 
Right. Here's, um, a, here's a question for a, 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 a drummer. Do you think he's unfairly treated? People seem to shit all over uh, Lars Ulrich and say he can't play and this and that. And... Um, it's a it's a mixed bag. I'll tell you yeah. this. Um, I I know that. Let me let me see. So there's there's when you're in a band. This and this is this will kind of roundaboutly answer your question. Yeah. When you're in a band, you know you can have someone who's fun and cool to hang out with right or you, or you can have someone that's like an amazing drummer that but probably is a dick right you know what i mean yeah um and i think at the time he was like that dude who was like just fun to hang out with he was like cool and part and whatever and he wasn't like fantastically amazing right um he's not my favorite i've seen lots of videos of him just botching stuff right right songs they played for 30 years <laughs> but right at the same time like you do something for 30 years like sometimes you're gonna forget so right um I, I watched that video of the half life Metallica. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that James says in the thing and he's, you know, he's Lars. It's like Bob rocks. Like, yo, I want some more weight in this. And Lars is like, so James, um, you know, if you want weight, like I'm your guy, you know, like all whatever. <laughs> and like James, James gets on the thing. He's like, make us wait forever. Cause he takes <laughs> yeah, so yeah. long to record <laughs> drum tracks. Right. Right. I mean, it took him nine months to record drum tracks for that record. Yeah. And they're, they're great. But like, you know, I mean, the, the photos I saw, dudes are splitting tape left and right. 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 You know what I mean? <laughs> so good is subjective. I yeah, don't know. I think right. he's made the cut all these years. So good for him. Right. I guess. Right. So Lars was another one. Tim Alexander. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I was, I was a big fan. I mean, Derek Grant is probably one of my favorite drummers of all time. Yeah. Which I mean, I've seen that kid do some stuff. Say like he, I think he's younger than me. I think he's, I'm 40. I think Derek's 41. I think. Okay. And I've seen him do some stuff. He might be. No, I think he's. Anyway, I've seen him do some stuff that you're just like, even to this day. He did the stuff when he was like 17, 18. Right. And I and I'm still. I mean, I don't know if you ever listened to the the definition, the Trucking by Definition record from Suicide Machines. No. Nope. Like d- there's stuff on there, dude, that you can't even, you can't even fathom. You're just yeah. like, how how is this even possible? I mean he's just a great musician and fun to watch and he's entertaining and he's super solid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, you know, a bunch of those dudes. And honestly, like a lot of these that I really looked up to were like more like local heroes and Flint. Right. You know, like I like I like some of the big dudes and they're fun to watch and whatever, but you know, aside from, you know, that kind of stuff, I was a big John Stainer fan Yeah. yeah. growing up. I mean, yeah, everyone likes, you know, everyone likes that, you know, the helmet records. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. With him on it, of course, you know, yeah, like yeah. I've seen him play a couple times without him, and it's just like, it's fine. It's just not the right. same. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. His, I mean, his so, I mean, I like Lombardo. You know, like yeah. I was obviously like the Slayer stuff, like Nico McBrain. You know, yeah. like yeah. there's a lot of the, the the big guys, but you know, most of my favorite dudes were were dudes that I could see like around town. Like, right, right. You know, um, my one of my guys, Dusty, that used to drum for like. He eventually drummed for like Good Charlotte right. and some other bands, but he just, he grew up playing these like bands around town, and I was just like, dude, this kid's real good, fun yeah. to watch, you know? Yeah, those those are the, the seems like every town has a, a a bunch of those, and they're just sort of like our like you, you almost feel like they're yours, like this they're your secret, you know? Oh yeah, dude. I mean, no one knows who the rugby mothers are outside of Flint, <laughs> Flint, right. Michigan, right? Yeah. So. Um. So, Earth Mover, this is your first time touring. Yeah. Uh, how how long was that tour? We did. I think we did like two and a half weeks um, with Catharsis, you know, on the East Coast. Right. And so, like, you know, I saved like every single thing from like, oh, I went to Buffalo, New York, Mighty Taco, and like I saved a receipt. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> and like the spork. Yeah. Right. That I got there, and like I, you know, just all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I was. It was amazing. We got yeah. to tour with those dudes, and I mean, Alexi Rodriguez again, like probably one of the baddest ass dudes around, right? You know, um, at the time, and I'm sure he's still amazing today. I don't um, see him drum very much anymore, right. um, although we do talk from time to time. It's I don't get to see him drum as much, but um, you know, those early Catharsis records, well, the only Catharsis records, I mean, they're fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we did that with them, and that was a that was my first kind of run at like 
you know, understanding, you know, the van and being gone for a long time and, and, you know, just, you know, the different kind of like, you know, the different situations that you're in with people without food, without right. sleep, without, yeah. you know, money, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and did, you, did you like, did you like it? Did you want to do it again? Like, right. Oh yeah. I mean, we yeah. Was, it was, it was fun. I mean, we were just like, Oh, this is so cool. And like, you know, the, the people that you meet and the, the, the things that you get to see and, you know, there's, there's good and bad. I mean, you run into, you know, when the two, when a tour sucks, you're like, Oh, it's kind of like eating pizza. Like it's like not great, but it's still pizza. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we definitely want to do it again. We did that tour with them. And then not too long after that, you know, we do a bunch of like random, you know, East coast and, and, you know, we would go, you know, just random places and play in like, you know, Buffalo or, right. Um, Cleveland or, you know, Chicago was a big one for us mm -hmm. for where we did lots of stuff in Chicago and, um, eventually went to Europe and got to go. You actually, we, we ran into to Damien and his whole crew, oh, nice. um, at the airport yeah. or at the, at the, um, I guess it was the night before we ran into them at the this place called the hospital that everyone used to eat in Orlando. Right. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was crazy. Like we ended up going over there and playing um, a couple of shows with culture. Yeah. Um, this would have been 98, okay. I think. Yeah. And, and did you know those guys already? Um, yeah, we, we knew, you know, we knew some of them we'd played shows before. Yeah. Um, you know, they, South Florida was a weird place at the time and it, it still is, but it was, yeah. it was pretty incestuous. So yeah. like, you know, just before, you know, the tour, like, you know, Joe, who was in As Friends Rest yeah. and was in, we used to play Morning Again just before the tour. Like he ended up playing in Culture and they left the other guitar player behind and they had some other fill-in guy. And um, I think Timmy um, from As Friends Rest was playing drums for Culture at the time. Okay. Which, you know, so it's just, it's just a weird mixed bag of people. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, I found out later that's kind of what happens when a lot of bands go to Europe, that it's kind of like who can go, who has obligations at home, who oh, can afford right. it, who has yeah. kids, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that yeah, makes sense. So, you know, you would see written, the most random bands in Europe and be like, who is that guy? Some random, <laughs> right. some random bass player filling in, right? Right, right. Um, so after this band... Uh, is that Walls of Jericho after this band? Yeah. And it was, you shared a lot of the same members, correct? Um, yeah, there were three of us, yeah. basically, that that were in the last... Um, we just had a, a bass player that, that joined for the European tour. Right. And then he um, ended up being in the new band with us when we started Walls. So yeah. that was like 90, 99, I think. Okay. So long ago, man. It's like a whole life, it's <laughs> like know, a lifetime right? ago. I know it's crazy to think that how long ago the '90s were now. <laughs> um, and, and so, so what kind of band was Walls of Jericho? Um, well, in the beginning, we were just like, you know, we'd written a handful of songs that that we, you know, we thought were cool, and we wanted to just, you know, have this. We had this weird mix and it was a weird weird time like that you know the the late 90s was like a big you know there was a big like youth crew yeah you know movement that happened with like you know like you know the the batteries in my eyes and right. better than a thousands and those all those bands right and then so you know we weren't we liked those bands but we weren't like oh this is our this is our thing i mean right you know some of the guys are you know into some pretty heavy picking and some hot metal, metal right. licks, you know yeah. what I mean? So like the mix was basically like, you know, we did something kind of interesting in the beginning was we had a weird medley of like youth crew parts and um, like metal parts and then like kind of traditional, like hardcore parts. Yeah. Yep. And we just kind of jammed them into songs, yeah. you know, like in it, and it worked like in the, in the, you know, in the early, you know, first, first EP, you know, in the demo was like, yeah. We just kind of threw these things together. We're like, oh, this is, we like to play it. It was fun. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And, uh, and I had mentioned this and I was giving you some sort of ideas of what we could talk about. And one of them was having a, a female singer in a, in a band of, you know, what's usually 
mostly was like a, a male oriented scene at that time anyway. Did yeah. ever, did you guys ever experience pushback or any anything like that with, with that? You know, and not as not as much yeah. as not as much as people may think. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> you know, it's interesting when when we did the last Earth Mover show mm-hmm. was in Detroit and like a thousand around a thousand people showed up to the show. Right. And um, Catharsis was supposed to play, but they got real. Lexi got real sick, mm-hmm. throwing up in the van. Didn't make it. They got like halfway and turned around. And uh, <clears throat> we decided that since they canceled, that you know this was right around the time that Walls of Jericho like kind of formed. And so we had just released a demo. That was our our first first night selling the demo of the show. Right. So we kind of teed it up pretty perfectly in the sense that like. Um, they canceled. We we're like, we're all there. We're like, let's just get up and play four songs on someone else's gear and just like get up and be done with it. Right. And we weren't, we weren't really planning to play. It just kind of happened. And so, you know, we, I think we printed like 300 demos. We're sounding for like five bucks a piece. And we jumped up on stage. We're like, blah, 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 Earth Mover, new band. And we, we started, we played our four songs and it just, it just crushed. It was awesome. It was just right. absolutely people were just like blown away. Right. Cause this was just like a whole new thing. People had never heard us before. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we went through 300 demos, you know, in one night, which was awesome. Yeah, awesome. And just kind of setting us up. So people, people from that show, a lot of people knew and had come from different places. So we had people from like Buffalo and people from Syracuse yeah. and Chicago and Cleveland. So like, you know, as we went back, like the word kind of spread pretty quickly yeah. about, you know, what we were, who we were and what we were doing and you know the goal is never to have like oh we're gonna have like a girl singer right, right you know like we went in and did a bunch of auditions you know the some of the some of the dudes and i and we auditioned a bunch of people and she came in and crushed it and so yeah. we were like yeah. all right we know her we're gonna you know she's probably like 17 at the time maybe yeah. right and so but we didn't we never got any like your flack from it honestly like right Candace was always like, you know, super confident in her own and super, um, you know, boisterous and tough. Yeah. She's, I mean, she's probably the toughest person in the band by far. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, and so it was one of those things where like, she just, you know, she did her and it didn't, it didn't matter, you know, yeah. and, and she had a, uh, a pretty good knowledge of, you know, when she had a microphone and someone else didn't, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, she, she handled herself like, I mean, better than I would have by yeah. a lot and probably most people, you know what right, I mean? Right, right. Yeah, definitely. So it was, but it was, it was, it was awesome. I mean, having her, in the, having her in the band and having that be <coughs> something that we, you know, just did and it just happened. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it was organic and it was fun. Right. And, you know, everyone, everyone got along, Yeah. you know, really well. And it was good, man. It was, it was, um, I think all around it was just like, a fun, you know, atmosphere. Everyone has ups and downs, right? Yeah, yeah of course. But it's funny. She's a super funny, funny person. Yeah. And she has like a great sense of humor and is, is worked, you know? Yeah. Did, did, did you guys, uh, did you tour with them? We did. So yeah. we did like, yeah, we did, a, we did a bunch of tours, man. We did, you know, like a, um, we would tour with like, you know, random bands. Yeah. You know, Undying, Hope Conspiracy, um, we would do shows with this band, shows with that band. Yeah. Um, you know, we try to do shows with, you know, we go to like Buffalo and try to play with like every time I die and, right. you know, just, just random bands. Right. And so it was fun. I mean, we, we ended up, you know, getting booked through a, a good agency with, um, you know, Ken Moore group at the time, oh, I think. Yeah. So right. Matt with, Pike and, and, yep. Yeah. Matt and Tim Bohr, I think yeah. was doing stuff and, you know, they put us on, you know, we would do like, you know, a week with like earth crisis and like Candiria, right. Yeah, nice. Or I remember one, you know, he called me, he's like, I got this tour. You want to, you want to do it? I'm like, what is it? And he's like, Oh, it's like, you know, four weeks with like in flames and skin lab and <laughs> earth crisis. Right. <laughs> yeah. And we were supposed to actually go to Europe. I think at the, at the same time. Right. I remember I called one of the dudes. I'm like, listen, I'm like, we don't have any info on this Europe tour. We heard it's happening this is like a full thing. We're not getting a lot of money, but it'll be a great tour. And yeah, everyone's like, and, yeah. everyone's like, let's do it. Right. Yeah. So we would just, we went and opened up that show, you know, the whole, the whole tour. And it was, our van actually broke down the first, the first show. 
huh. and we had a rental van that we rented in Chicago because our first show was House Blues. Broke yeah. down on the way there. We left our van on the side of the road, rented a van, had Earth Crisis, Roadie, Sean come pick us up, took us to House of Blues. We rented a van. <clears throat> we missed our slot. We didn't get to play. But we rented a van with like 200, I think like 200 or 300, 300 miles on it. Yeah. We, and we had it for like, I don't know, four weeks. And we took it back to Chicago with like 38,000 miles on it or something. <laughs> <laughs> like it was... Yeah, I mean, this was, you know, two captain chairs. Right. Everything else was in the back with a mat- mattress on top. It goes right. awful. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, how did how did you guys go over with the the crowds on the, on that tour? It was it was good. You know, it's it's always a, it's. I mean, Earth Crisis was on the tour too, so it's yeah. helped. It helped to have like another hardcore band and like. Yeah. You know, people. You know, a lot of those people had never seen us. You have a lot of long sleeve tea people yeah. at that show with like yeah, yeah. flames people right 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 and so <clears throat> but we did well like we did well in merch every night which is good i mean yeah. that's always a pretty good indicator um you know no one threw anything at us so that right. was good <laughs> yeah um but yeah i think all i think all in all it was was pretty good we we're like just metal enough you right, know and in right. canis was kind of just pissed enough that people were like oh this is cool like yeah, definitely. i've never seen anything like this I didn't yeah. know it existed so yeah nice and uh, so, so how long were you with uh, Walls of Jericho? I did just the first, <coughs> the first demo, and then the first um, EP, and the first full length. So I left the band in probably 2001, I okay. think. Yeah. Yep, just a few years. Yeah, and then. Uh, so, have you mostly played uh, hardcore, punk-related stuff, metal, and that kind of thing? Yeah, mm-hmm. but it, I mean, I've I've done I've I've done a bunch of other random stuff, but like you know, more notably known stuff is obviously the hardcore metal stuff. That yeah. it was one of those things that I wasn't like, oh, this is what I want to do forever. But right. I kept getting calls from people that wanted you know me to go on tour or play right. shows, and I was just like, I'm like, okay, I can do it. You know what I mean? And so <laughs> yeah, you get get roped into not roped in. I mean, I did it willingly, but it's you know. You get to go out and hang out with your friends and yeah, and play uh you know play the rock shows you know yeah. Who have, who have been some of your favorite bands you've you've toured with? So you've you've done like, like multiple tours, right? With yeah, you mean like band touring with or bands drumming for? Uh, tour like touring with. <laughs> um, you know it's 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 fun. Like I did a tour, oh, man. We did um. We did a warp tour one year. I was playing with this band from Florida called Remembering Never. Yeah. And we, you know, we, it was cool because Motion City soundtrack was on the tour. Yeah. And so, like, I get to get to watch like Helmet Helmet was on the tour. Yeah. Motion City. Oh, that's like, awesome. All you know, I think Hello Goodbye was on maybe on the tour. Yeah. Um, scary kids, scaring kids, just like a bunch of like random kind of bands. I think every time I die was on that year. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was fun. Cause like it was, you know, I had never gotten to do, you know, that tour before and it was only like a month of it, but it was still, it was still just rad because like, I don't know, something about the summer tours. I mean, I, I almost died a couple of times because of yeah. the, the van, the drives. Right. And of course we did the tour in a van and trailer, which is always awful. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, that was, that was fun. We did, uh, um, I got to do. Um, when I was drumming and throwdown, we got to do like, uh, I don't know, like a two week run before we went to Europe with, um, biohazard and agnostic front. Oh, wow. And so like growing up, dude, like I was a big biohazard fan. Like, yeah. Yeah. I was just like, I tell you what, dude, when, when, when you get to that part and you're like, and when you're in Brooklyn, <laughs> right. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. Oh man, dude. And I I'm still like, I'm a, I ride pretty hard for the first three Biohazard albums still to this day. Oh, I'm, dude. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> dude, I, I can't tell you every time I, every time. So I, Danny and I are friends on Facebook. Every time I, I troll him, like if it's his birthday or something, I'll be yeah. like, I'll be like, pick it up, Dave Lux. <laughs> right. I just can't, I can't not do it. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, it's just one of those things. Like, 
I, I was, you know, side stage every day yeah. watching, watching biohazard, <laughs> yeah. right. Watching them play, you know, punishment and, you know, um, tales from the hard side and like all these songs. I'm just like, this is sweet. <sighs> right. Yeah. And so, uh, but that was cool. That was, that was fun. And <clears throat> obviously like, you know, not fronts. Awesome. Dudes are just like the funniest dudes. Yeah. Um, ever like the sweetest dudes. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, you know, I've never heard a bad thing about the, like uh, bands that they've taken on tour. I've never heard a bad like they apparently they they just sort of the best one of the best bands you can tour with. Yeah, it's I mean it's super nice. They just like you know we we sit and just listen to stories from like Vinny forever, right? Yeah. And you know Hatebreed was also on the tour, so it was us, Hatebreed, Biohazard, um, Agnostic Front, and then Full Blown Chaos. Oh wow. So just like we do like House of Blues shows or whatever, you know, right. on the East Coast. And uh, it was cool, man. I was just like, this is just the coolest thing. Like, yeah. cause all these bands and I was a little bit older, like I could appreciate it more. I had a lot more time under my belt with these bands, yeah. you know, um, in my ears. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. And then so, you can watch them every night. That's, that's really yeah. cool. It's, it's, it's crazy. And I think, you know, we did a, I, like I said, I got, I got rope. I got kind of like, you know, I don't want to say roped in. That's, that's the wrong word. I got, <laughs> right. I got asked to play in a lot of these different bands and like, you know, so it was, it was interesting. I got to play like the same breakdown, in like five different bands. Right. <laughs> right. Because it's all like similar yeah, you know, to each other. And, yeah. you know, we, we would do, you know, we would, um, <clears throat> I was actually telling, uh, telling Saul this not too long ago when I saw him. So the dude, remember the band, um, it's not. Oh, I don't want to say sworn enemy. It's not sworn enemy. Um, oh, oh man, I, I'm I'm drawing a blank right now. Yeah. Um, they're on they're on Eulogy Records. Okay. And um, Saul's in the band, and Pat, and a bunch. They're from Jersey. Oh, oh I'm uh... I'm totally I'm totally drawing a blank right now. <laughs> yeah. Of what their name is. Um, I'll think of it as I'm, as I'm telling you, but, but anyway, um, while I was playing with, with, with Wiley until the end, we did, we did, um, we would go up and do these shows in like New Jersey and like Philly and, and, and in New York and wherever. And like, we would, we would play these shows and it was like, you know, we play at club Chrome, right. In like right. Jersey. And, and I remember being at the show in Erie and, Oh, God, I'm, I wish I could remember this band's name. And the the band like beat up the club. Like they beat up. There was like a, a rumble, and like they beat up the club. And they uh, it was cool. It was like and it was during our set. And so it was like we see these guys fighting with the bouncers, and like one of the dudes like punches this guy in the face, pushes him in the closet, shuts the door, keeps moshing. Like it was just it was weird. I mean, it, and I think on that same run. Um, you know, was like the show we played at, at like CBGB's and like, you know, Mike Ski gets stabbed in the leg. The show gets shut down. Right. It's like, it's of course it's Rich Hall show. So he's going around trying to find out who did it. And it's like, it was crazy, dude. Like the, it just, you know, all, ever seems like every band, you know, has like these weird stories that would just happen. You're like, Oh, right. this happened, this happened, you yeah. know, that's crazy. I mean, it, it's nowhere compared to like, you know, the, you know, the stories that like people like Vinny Stigma have, right. Of, <sighs> I know, you know, right? 40, 40 years of, of doing this. You know what I mean? I know, right? It's crazy. So crazy. So crazy. Yeah, he's been, I think someone said he's played in four different decades or something like that because he was playing in the 60s. Yeah. With, with like his, with, with another band, like a, like a early kind of rock band and then, it, you know, punk rock in the 70s and I don't know if AF yeah. started in 79 or 80, you know, that's, probably not i think more early 80 81 but uh yeah and he's still <laughs> he's still out there doing it it's crazy it's awesome dude have you watched that have you watched that documentary yeah it's yeah like, it's great the, like the new york Hark one like yeah. it's crazy like yeah he's like i was born in this apartment like i'm you know how like i still live in this it's crazy man yeah. it's so cool yeah he's that like, dude's legend, lives man. downstairs my nephew yeah man, it's crazy that's just like dude <laughs> dude's legend yeah. yeah so so good yeah definitely and um, so, with, with so, as a drummer, are you uh, loyal to any sort of brand of drums? 
Um, no, I mean, no. I, I used yeah. to be like, I, I had, you know, when I was touring a lot, I had endorsements right. that, that I'll rack up, but like they, you know, they were just like, because you're out doing things, they're like, Oh, you're out doing things. Cool. Here's some things. Right. And so, right. you know, nothing's ever free. Right. You always got to pay for stuff unless right. you're like Aerosmith. Right. But <laughs> right. we weren't that, you know what I mean? No one was that. So it's, but you know, we have now if, as I've gotten older, like, you know, I'm, I still, you know, I play all Sabian stuff, which is great. I play like all Vic first stuff, you know, like, so there's a couple things that I stuck to that I really like, right? but not because, you know, anyone's, you know, giving to me or giving me a deal. It's just like, these are the things that I like that yeah. work best for me. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Now, uh, you have a company called K breaks. Can you, uh, yeah. t- talk about what that's about? Oh yeah. So the, um, K breaks is basically a, um, a drum anchor system mm-hmm. that allows drummers to play and stop their drums from sliding away from them as they play. Right. Like that's, that's the skinny of it. Right. So, right. you know, that the idea is that I spent a lot of time, a lot of years, you know, playing my drums, like my kick drum would just like start flying away because right. I'm playing hard. I'm on different surface. I'm on a rented kit. I'm on a back line, whatever. Right. And, you know, people put cinder blocks Cement in front blocks, of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bass amps, right? Like, I mean, we've seen it all. And so I launched this product in uh, 2015. Okay. Yep. And so, um, you know, we got picked up with a distributor and, you know, our stuff sold in, I don't know, like 80 or 90 countries around the world. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, it's a cool, now it's, it's a cool product that, it was something I kind of had a passion for. I'm just like, oh, and actually, I, I, I started the idea. I had the idea for this product while I was on tour. Um, with actually, you know the, you know the, um, the band, uh, Bomb the Music Industry. Remember you heard yeah, that band? Yeah, I've heard of the band. Yeah. Yeah. So we, I was playing this other band called The Riot before from Virginia. Okay. And we, we were doing a show with Bomb Music Industry, and I had one of those rugs that had like the two by four on the front oh, of yeah. it. <laughs> yep. And like it, it's great, it worked well. And yeah, you know, after, after like two nights of the tour with these guys, I mean, you know, they'd be like, "Hey, can I borrow your rug?" And right. like they would play last, yeah. and we were playing like second. All right. And so, you know, it'd be like me moving like his drums and or you know mic stands, whatever, like off the rug so I could put my stuff all in right. the case, which goes in the trailer. Right. So my whole band couldn't load out because all my drums went in first. Right. In the trailer and the load in, so. So you, to wait you know, I was just, yeah. So I'm like, I had this like idea. I'm like, how can I not let people, you know, use my rug, but like, it's still, you know, they can have their own thing, but what could that thing be? Right. Yeah. And so I had this idea and then actually I decided this is when I was living in Seattle, I moved back to, back to Michigan and I decided to um, go back to, to school for a degree in industrial design. Yeah. So I started, had this idea started my degree, um, did a full three and a half years of a bachelor's of fine arts. Yeah. And then two weeks after I graduated, my first pallet of product showed up at my house. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. yeah. That, that, was, that was my next question was going to be, did you, you know, do you work with someone to design it? So, so you, you pretty much did all of this yourself. Yep. And it's yeah. all, um, I had someone originally help me with like the 3d person parts in the beginning. Right. And he ended up being actually one of my, who was my friend ended up being one of my professors. Yeah. And eventually I started being able to, to work on my own stuff. Right. And so I rebuilt it like 65,000 times. Yeah. Um, in, you know, in CAD and did a bunch of 3d prints, probably, I don't know, 50 or 60 different versions of 3d printed parts. Right. Right. Um, testing them, putting them on kick drums, going to guitar center, like sticking them on things you know, all, all the, yeah, the yeah. crazy stuff that you have to do and, you know, having people test them, but like, don't take photos of it because it's not a thing yet. You <laughs> right, know? right. Um, but eventually, you know, we, we got it out there and, and, you know, got it into the world. And yeah. now we have three, four products that were in the line now, which, mm-hmm. you know, we got stuff for kick drums, stuff for hi-hat stands, symbol stands, snare stand. We have the universal for that catches a lot of the other things. Then we have a, another version that slides over the originals, which is an attachment for playing on hard surfaces. Okay. So you could play on like literally a, you know, a gymnasium floor. Right. And your stuff wouldn't move with right. no rug. Nice. Yeah. Which is great for like people doing videos, especially right. now like inter- 
internet videos, YouTubers, you're doing something like, you know, glass floors, marble floors. Right. You want that like clean look, you know, they're using like the voice and the voice in Brazil and yeah. um, where they want that clean look, you know what I mean? No carpet. Right. So, right. No, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty slick. No, no. When you started this to, to, to go out and sell this to people and get it out to people, um, how, how was, do, how was having to do that? Um, you know, it's interesting. I mean, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a weird thing. Like I, I always feel like, you know, we have these big networks of people that, that will help. Right. right. But, but what it really comes down to is like, you really got to do it yourself. Right. Yeah, you really exactly. got to be the one you can't really rely on anybody. Like, you know, um, but it, it was, it was crazy. Like I, I remember going to pitch, I went and pitched my first store ever, um, in Hoboken actually. Yeah. Uh, at a place called Pete's drum den. Right. And I pitched him, you know, I'm like, Hey, I walked in like 10 minutes before close. Like I got this thing. You ever had this problem? Um, here's a product, blah, blah. blah. And, and the guy's like, Oh, this is, yeah, this is great, man. Like, uh, yeah. He's like, I'll, I'll take 10 of these. Here's my card. Shoot me a PO. Right. Yeah. And I like, I walked out and I was just like, what just happened? Right. 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 I'm like, I just, I came down and, and my, you know, fiance, now my wife was in the car. Right. Right. And I went down there and I'm like, she's like, how'd it go? I'm like, they, they bought, they right. bought 10. She's like, what? I'm like, yeah, that's it. I just, yeah. So it, it was interesting. You know, I did a couple runs of, you know, going to like, you know, I'd go to every guitar center, music store and like, right. Hey, have you ever heard of this thing? And, yeah. um, it was interesting. I mean, it's an interesting thing like to, to sell yourself, um, in that way, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. a little, it's a little different. Yeah. And, uh, do you think that you like being involved in the hardcore scene and the DIY ethics of that, did that like inform how you do this sort of? Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, I think, I think that, you know, one of the interesting things is like, you know, when we first started doing like walls, like I was, you know, we all had like little jobs that we did. Like one guy did, like the merch stuff. One guy did recording stuff, one guy, right. you know, and so my job was always to do booking. Okay. And so, you know, I started like talking to all the labels and all the agents and, you know, was, you know, I was that guy that was like always trying to like sell the band, right. Yeah, Push the yeah. band. Here's what we're doing. Here's how we're doing it. You know, and, and it's all about hustle and work. Right. Yeah. So that's what it is. I mean, it's the same, it's the same thing, right. You just, the medium's a little different, but you're right. still just, you know, telling people, you know, the benefits of what you have and how it can be awesome. And, yeah. you know, with our thing, it's the K break thing. It's like, we're solving a problem, yeah, yeah which exactly. is a little different. You right. may be a problem in, in hardcore is that maybe you don't have enough great bands coming through town. So right. let me, let me show you how I can bring a yeah. great band to town. Right. So I don't yeah, know. Exactly. And, uh, so if people wanted to, to find information on this, uh, where could they find it? You have a, a, a website on the K break stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just kbreaks.com, K B R A K E S. Cool. Or you can say even K Breaks on Instagram. Yeah. You know, we're we're uh you know, we answer, try to answer everyone, yeah. you know, on there. We've we've actually delved delved pretty hard into all kinds of genres, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, you know, we're you know, we we work with a lot of people like in country yeah. and and hip hop and it's 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 been nice because there's a lot of years where I wasn't touring or playing drums yeah you know going to school and doing whatever and it kind of kept me in, in my world. head in that yeah in that world yeah. a little bit which is nice nice and, and right do you have any uh f famous people or, or that are using these oh um yeah i mean we you know we got we got i mean it's, it seems weird just to like drop a bunch of names on people <laughs> yeah, right yeah. but it's but no it's all right we i mean we got like um you know dan and shay mm -hmm. right um, Carrie Underwood. Nice. Um, drummer for Fantasia Brino. Um, who else, who else in that world? We got, um, you know, Andy Selway from KMFDM. Oh, wow. Um, there's a bunch of random, yeah, and we got yeah. a bunch, bunch of people, right? We got, um, I, I can't even think off the top of my head of right. all of the people that we work with, but it's, but it's, it's really cool. Like whether there are people that are, you know, we're endorsing them yeah. or, you know, it's people that are just like friends of ours that we've met at like NAM or we've met right. at like drum shows. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's all about, I mean, in the end of the day, like for me, it's all about the product's great and it's a, it's a great thing. It solves a problem. It works great. It's perfect Yeah. in, in every way in my head. 
and people that use it love it. Yeah. But in the end of the day, it's really about the relationships for me. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, it's, it's the, the product just happens to be a medium that, you know, opens a door for a conversation. And that's what I really like. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's awesome, man. So you went from, what you say, an $84 drum set. Was that what it was? 80 or bucks. Yeah. 80, $80, $80 bucks. drum set to, to having this company that that's, that's going to feel pretty cool. Yeah, it, you know, it's funny, like, I, I think back, like, that first drum set I had definitely could have used some cable picks. <laughs> yeah, you know right. I mean, the <laughs> irony is not lost on me, yeah. man, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and are you still playing now with, with anyone? I mean, I am. not many I bands got... are playing right now, but... No, but everyone's recording, like, everyone's working yeah. on stuff. I got a couple projects I'm working on with some people um, back in Seattle. Yeah. We're doing stuff, like, digitally. Yeah. Um, I got two bands I play with in Grand Rapids here. One band called Old Fire that's kind of like, I don't know, kind of skate punk, kind of fast, you know, propagandi kind right. of like music. And then another band that's more like kind of like a post hardcore yeah. nice. kind of band. Um, you know, just trying to just trying to do something, right? Yeah, just, yeah, of course. Trying to just play, and we, you know, play shows around town and, um, you know, locally. And, you know, we've been trying to get out, we're trying to get out more, but, you know, once the, the pandemic hit, yeah, you know, we, that all, we're all getting ready to go in the studio now and record. Right. Um, we got like three different records hopefully coming out in the next six months. So, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. It should be good. I'm excited about them. Yeah. It's cool. Well, I appreciate you, uh, taking the time out to do this. I'm glad we were able to, uh, get it done tonight and uh yeah this was a lot of fun man yeah this is this is great man thanks for yeah. for having me man i appreciate yeah, it yeah all right man well i will uh talk to you soon and i'll let you know uh when i'm gonna throw this up you got me i appreciate it all right take care talk to you soon bye